Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part 6 of the design pattern tutorial. In this session, we will discuss differences between singleton and static classes, static class example and real world usage examples of singleton design pattern. Please refer to the previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding. In the previous session, we have discussed the different versions of singleton design pattern. From the base singleton pattern, we have evolved to multi-thread support and then we have discussed about eager loading. We have also discussed how we can leverage on the built-in lazy class of .NET Framework 4.0 which takes care of thread safety internally along with delayed initialization. Now, when we talk about differences between singleton and static, in many of the interviews, we are often questioned on the usage of singleton design pattern with respect to the static class. And we are also questioned on why we need to use singleton class instead of a static class. To answer that question, let's first focus on main features of singleton with respect to the static classes. First, we need to understand that static is a keyword and whereas singleton is a design pattern. Singleton preserves conventional class approach and it's important to remember that the fundamental difference between singleton pattern and static class is singleton gives you an object whereas static classes just provide static methods. Singleton is an object creation pattern with one instance of the class. Singleton can implement interfaces, inherit from other classes and it aligns with the object oriented programming concepts. We should also understand that Singleton object can be passed as a reference whereas static object cannot be passed as a reference to other methods or objects. We can create a singleton in such a way that it can be disposed. Also, singleton object is stored on heap whereas static classes are stored on stacks and the singleton objects can be cloned as well. Now, coming to static classes, they are created in those situations where any of the values are static. To see that in action, let's switch to Visual Studio and look at an example for a static class. Let's bring up our previous demo application. Let's create a new project over here by doing right click add new project and let's create another console application. Let's name it as static demo. Now let's say we have been given a task to convert a temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius and vice versa. How do we approach in solving this task? We are pretty sure that the formulas for Fahrenheit to Celsius and vice versa conversion will not change at all and hence we can use static classes with static methods that does the conversion for us. Hence to achieve this we can leverage on using a static class and static methods. Let's see how we can do that. Let's create a new class and name it as converter and let's change this class to static by using public static class converter. Now let's create a method which converts the given Celsius to Fahrenheit public static double to one height of double Celsius. Let's return the calculated Fahrenheit by using the formula Celsius star nine by five plus thirty two. Let's create another static method which converts foreign height to Celsius double return foreign height minus 32 into 5 by 9. Now let's switch to the main program and see how we can use these methods that we have created for the temperature conversion. In order to save some time, I have already declared 
Celsius and Fahrenheit as double variables and assign some values. To check the conversion values, we are invoking the static converter methods without instantiating the object as it's not required in this scenario. Now, let's run this application. Look at the output and notice that the static converter is working as expected. With this, we have proved that in the situation where we need static computations, we can achieve them by leveraging on static classes. Now, with this explanation, we hope now you are familiar with the differences between static classes and singleton design pattern. Now, you may have a question in your mind that when to use singleton. To answer that, after all these differences, the one major take in the singleton is that it gives you the little flexibility over static classes to make the design changes and variations as and when the situation demands. To conclude, is the due diligence of the programmers to choose when to use static and when to use singleton as per their application programming requirements. Let's now focus on the real world scenarios where we use singleton design pattern. Exception or information logging, connection pool management, file management, device management such as printer spooling, application configuration management, cache management, and session based shopping cart are some of the real world usages of singleton design pattern. In the next session, we will implement the exception logging using singleton design pattern with a real world use case sample. Thank you for listening and have a great day.